All right, guys, we're back in the shop with another crazy oil change. This is my 2011 Lexus RX350 that we featured on the channel before. We're gonna do an oil change and there's gonna be a few surprises. So if you're planning to watch this video to learn how to change the oil on your RX350, please watch the video all the way through to the end because there's a few surprises. Watch it before you do your oil change. You're gonna to need to learn about what tools you're gonna to need and how the oil filter cartridge is a little bit different than some other cars. Stay tuned, let's do it. All right, we're back here in the shop, gonna do another crazy oil change, not as crazy as that Rolls Royce. It is another cold, cold day here in Vegas, a December day. So I got the diesel heater cranked up, that's what all the background noise is. This is my uh, 2011 Lexus RX350 that I featured on the channel before. Time to do an old change. I was gonna take it into the dealer, um, but you know, they wanted kind of a lot of money to do a lot of BS, you know. They're, oh, we checked the air and the tires, and, you know. They're used to dealing with people who don't know anything about cars, and this is a really simple engine. I know how to change oil. I have my own oil pit. But I did, uh, I bought OEM Lexus Toyota oil filter and OEM Toyota SAE 020 authentic Toyota brand motor oil uh, to document this so that when I reset the oil and document it, uh, we're using quality OEM parts. I do also add in, I talked about this Rolls Royce video, the Z-Max engine fuel treatment. I am not endorsed by this, it's not a paid endorsement. I just really like this stuff. There's a link to it in my uh, Amazon link tree there in the description if you want to get some, but you can pick this up at Walmart or anywhere. I've been wanting to try this thing. I bought this at Harbor Freight. It's a uh, oil funnel kit, right? You're so, what this does is locks in the same way your oil cap would so that there's no spilling. I've been dying to try this thing, but most of the cars and things that we use, these old DeLoreans and Rolls Royces, they, they don't have locking caps the way this modern car does. So I want to try this out and see if this thing really works. See if I can actually not spill any oil this time. This should be a pretty easy thing to do. However, I haven't done any research really on the car. I have no idea where this cartridge goes. I don't know if it goes up top or on the bottom. See, sometimes these cartridges, they go in up top and sometimes they go in on the bottom. I'm just gonna have to go find it. Looks like it uh, comes with this little connection here, an O-ring, some O-rings. It's a standard cartridge, okay. Let's go f find the oil filter on this thing. Okay, I'm under the car. Uh, that's the transmission. I get this is the oil pan, because it's, it's got a little wetness there. The back of this seal looks like it's leaking just a tiny bit. I've never noticed a drop. Very, very clean under here. Here's a car with 115,000 miles on it, and it looks brand new. I mean, it's still got the factory marker writings on the manifold, and there's, I guess that's my cat way up under there, or is this it? Is that the cat? It's really small if it is and really easy. I think that's a resonator and I think that's my catalytic converter. So uh, I'm not sure. I think this is the oil filter cartridge. I've never seen one like that before. It's too clean. It's, that's gotta be it. What? And it looks like you could just put a regular ratchet right into it. Looks like I got a little wetness here I should check on. Probably tighten these up. This this looks way too easy. It can't be this easy. That has to be the cat because there's an upstream and a downstream O2 sensor. And then this has no sensors. So this is just some kind of a, maybe a resonator before the actual muffler. And you can see how this thing is rigged. See how there's a tunnel. This is set up to be an all wheel drive option that you would get a rear differential and then a shaft would run through here from an alternate type of transmission. This is not the all wheel drive, but you can see how it's set up that way. So some moron will probably go up under here 
and try to steal this, then that's not my cat. It's what I'm really happy to see that because Toyotas are generally the most stolen cats, and that's really difficult to get to. And it would be really easy to add some kind of barrier here with razor blades on it so that they can't get to it to steal it because they'd have to get up under here and cut it at a whole bunch of locations. There, there, they'd have to get between. So I'm happy about that. Not a good cat to steal. All of these uh, shaft seals are clean as a whistle. Look at that. Very happy with this car with this many miles on it. All right, let's get to work. All right. I still have not gotten a screen for the inside of this funnel, but I have ordered one. Basically, I got ordered a uh, like a sink strainer that's going to fit right in there, I think. And um, this magnetic Milwaukee light is the greatest thing ever. It is absolutely impossible to not get oil on the floor. It's just, you can't do it. I just had my dude come in here and he reconditioned this whole floor for me. We went through like five pounds of kitty litter and he swept and scrubbed this whole oil pit for me and getting it clean. And then now it's filled, it, you know, you can't do it. I know there's all sorts of Jiffy Lube experts out there going, oh, I change oil all the time and I don't spill a drop. I go home with a little gravy on my beard every time I go to dinner. So I can't do it. All right, plug is just mint. No metal on it. It looks, look at this. Toyota. And you know, I'm recording this on December 7th. Now, for those of you that know your history, today is the anniversary, the 81st anniversary of the attack of Pearl Harbor. And I've always been so proud of myself that in all my years, I did not own a Japanese car. And here I have sold out my country and bought this vehicle made by the same people that bombed our shores all those years ago. But, you know, we returned back to Japan and melted their faces off, so I guess we're even. Do I hold a grudge 81 years later? I, yes, I do. I did buy this car secondhand. Buy American whenever you can. That's the coolest oil filter case I've ever seen in my life. You should see this thing. And it's so clean. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna put the plug, I think this thing's done dripping. Put this plug back in here. Don't let it fall down the hole. Again, I'm sure it'll be fine. This seems pretty wet to me. I think a couple of these back bolts and that could just be residual from the last messy oil change. But just in case, I'm going to tighten up. I'm going to see if I could tighten up some of these bolts. Just going to put a little, just a little stank on them. Just in case. The fact that I can do that, and I'm using this small little wrench. Oh, that one was really, you can't get to some of these at all. Wow. There shouldn't be any movement to these and yet there is. So some of them you can't get to. I bet you it's the one I can't get to. 
what is this? 10 millimeter, of course it's a 10 millimeter. And there's no way you could get a spanner up into where that goes. You have to use maybe a claw foot. No, that wouldn't work either. It got me a 10 millimeter socket wrench, wrench spanner. Mike, my mechanic, you've seen on the channel, his dad's here helping me. He's doing the water heater. Oh, that's nice and tight. Yeah. I think I'm good. This is seriously the coolest oil filter housing I've ever seen because you can just put a ratchet right on it. Oh my God. Seriously? Oh, you know what? I bet that's the drain. Whatever that is, I don't want to lose it. Is that just a drain? I thought that was going to take off the whole housing. What? So that's just an additional drain. It's just an additional thing to make oil drain. Don't make a mess. So that means I still need... What is that under there? Maybe I should put this back on there. It looks like a pressure valve. Let me see if I have a wrench for this. Hopefully it's not proprietary. Nope. Nope. Well. Really? What? I have like a universal piece of crap. I mean, that's a nice piece of beautiful cast aluminum. Oh. I bought the combo kit that had every single size Available. So my choice is to either leave the filter in there and put oil back in if I want to drive the car right now, which I do, I was going to use the car. Or I'm going to have to go on Amazon or go somewhere tomorrow and get this, whatever this is. Just trying to change the oil in my car, and it's just supposed to be easy, and it's not. All right, look, it's only five. I can run down to Harbor Freights, or maybe Napa. Or Riley's. Riley's. Maybe they have one of these. Time to go on a field trip. All right, this is the crap I already got from home, or from Harbor Freight. Looking for a 64 millimeter. Here's their really fancy ones. Goes up to 36. Of course it does. I need a 64. This is just weird. Gonna try the Auto Zone. I had to drive the Ferrari since I was changing the oil on the Lexus. Check out that pimp daddy ride. Is that a bro ham? You know what I'm saying? This says Toyota 14 flute. Doesn't say millimeters. Um, doesn't say Lexus, but does say Highlander 2008. So that's kind of what the car is. I'm gonna guess that's it. That's probably it. Oh, the accessory section. You know, <clears throat> every car should have the fake stick on vents, but make sure you put them on upside down and going the wrong way so that everybody really knows how stupid you are when you put these on your car because, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, 
the star was saying, is, is, that, is your car real? I said, well, I drove it over here. I didn't imagine the shit. <laughs> so they go, well, I was thinking it was a Fiero. I go, it's got four seats in it. So, oh, yeah? Well, kids today don't kind of car. So for regular viewers of my shirt channel, you know that this is a rebody of an 89 uh, GTA T-Top Delete 350 TPI. And, um, you know, I call it the Ferrari just because it makes it easier because I don't want to have to explain it every time. And it's fun. I just call it the Ferrari. But, um, yeah, it's a, you know, I don't ever try to make people think it's a Testarossa. Um, but it is fun taking it out. It's a great car. I mean, it, as a just as a Trans Am, this thing is badass. You have to drive this thing gingerly because, like, God damn it. It's hard not to do that in this thing. It just can go sideways. And when you're trying to make a left in this town, forget it. It's like, just make a bunch of rights. You'll never get out of there trying to take a left. Forget it. Can I get a three-piece egg rolls? Okay. And four tacos, no sauce. Every oil change should be accompanied by some really crappy drive through food. This has been the tradition so far. You think you cool because you got a new iPhone? I have a real cell phone. I'm on hold. I'm gonna I'm, I'm calling the movies to see what movies are playing. Yes, operator, I'd like to make a collect call. BR549. Thank you. I'll hold. I like to make sure it's locked. Just one more. These are only really good when you're drunk in the middle of the night. All right, the inside of this thing says 6514. So 65 millimeter 14 with a T for Toyota. I think it's going to fit. Let's go try it out. Yep. Let's get this pulled. There we go. Oh. Now it's messy. I'm afraid to tilt this thing in case there's something in there other than the filter. Just oil so far. Wow, what a mess. It was, it was going good for a minute. Now it's messy. Whenever I buy a vehicle, even if they tell me they changed the oil, I like to go ahead and just change everything and get it over with because you don't know what kind of oil they put in it. Well, I kind of do because this car has always been dealer maintained its whole life. Let's pull this uh, cartridge out. And that's all there is to it. Goes in the trash. 
to not get the o-ring on this thread by accident and to make sure it's down into that gap and i could see how somebody could make that mistake because put this thing back together looks like this just goes in there like that oh there is a spring in there oh i see there's a bunch of other stuff there is some instructions here and that thing that comes off the bottom so even though I just paid whatever, eight or 10 bucks for that adapter, I'm gonna order the correct one. I mean, it works, but like the good ones are nice and I wanna do this myself and I want it to go flawlessly. So the real good ones are like 30 bucks. It's worth it. Considering they want like $600 to do a full service on this car or something stupid like that. Uh, to me, it's a good deal. Why is every single oil change some bunch of BS? I miss the good old days when you just had a little spin on oil filter. You just take the oil filter off, you throw it in the trash, you put another little $5 filter on there. I mean, maybe Toyota knows something because their cars last forever. So here's the other little O-ring. But you know, if I didn't take, if I didn't take that off, I wouldn't need to replace it. I think I just figured this all out. This thing is an oil drain adapter. This nipple, you put a hose on the end of this. You take the cap off of the oil filter cartridge. And this thing snaps up into there like that. <laughs> I know that there's Toyota technicians out there watching this laughing their head off, but we're learning something. Now, of course, they didn't, they don't exactly tell you what's going on here. And who would know this? I mean, I've changed oil on all sorts of cars my whole life. I have never seen something like this. So you have this on a hose. You take off that little cap, you put this on there, and you suck all the oil out of the motor, cleanly without spilling it on the floor, perhaps. Then, you pull this out somehow. How do you get it out? I bet there's a removal tool for this. A special custom removal tool that takes this off like, just like I said. So, okay. If you're doing a Toyota Lexus oil change, you kind of sort of don't need to mess with this and change this gasket. You don't need to take this off if you're gonna do it the messy way that I just did it, this, or the old fashioned way. So a lot of this was a bunch of malarkey. So, I put this damn thing back on. It's spring loaded. This is why I hate these cheap ass. You kind of want to use a breaker bar so you can jiggle it back and forth, you know? There it goes. So this thing's trash. I'm going to order the real one. Okay, we're all done under here. That's all done. Everything looks fine. Time to go up top, put the oil in. Now, I've been wanting to try this oil funnel kit. Well, I tell you what, I wish I could meet the person who invented these blister packs and give them a piece of my mind. Because I don't like them. I mean, 
These things have about killed me more times. Hey, this one's marked Lexus. Nice. Finally, something works. Wow, it came with a ton of adapters. I already like this thing. This is awesome. I get, that's it, it just... That's it. Nice. Yeah, so the idea here with this funnel kit is you can just cleanly put your oil in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and sneak this stuff in, the Z-Max. Again, not a paid endorsement. I just feel like this stuff works. You know, over the years, I've tried the Slick 50. I've tried the Duralube. I've tried all of the different little things, and I've just seen this work. I've seen the tests on it. It does absorb into the metal, and I use it. Maybe it's a joke. Maybe it's a ripoff. I don't know. It just makes me feel good. All right, I'm going to crank it up and uh, give it a little swish before I check the oil. All right, the trick is how do you get this out without spilling any oil on it? I guess like that. Okay, that's pretty clean. Nice. Sweet. Take the adapter off. Put the original oil cap back on. That was nice and clean. I liked it. Perfect. All right, as far as the uh, oil filter funnel thing, very happy with it, it worked great. I wish they had designed it so that the cup was slightly bigger, that you could fit all the adapters inside the cup for when you store it. Idiots! Okay, so to reset the oil maintenance required light on the dash message, it's a two-handed operation. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do this on camera. Okay, what you're supposed to do is, without starting the car, press the start button twice. One, two. That turns on the dash. Then what you want to do is, over here where your little odometer is, right? You want to hit it till you're on trip A. It's already on trip A. But you want it on trip A, right? Now, then what you're going to do. So, we're going to turn the, uh, the car back off, okay? We're gonna hold down the odometer trip button while turning the car back on, pressing it twice without starting it. Resetting oil maintenance data, it says. And then you'll see a little countdown, it flashes, and now it says it's done. And that light is now gone. I can cycle through my, my little deals here, and that's been reset. Okay, using my little navigation tool, I can go into setup, uh, vehicle, maintenance. All right, and I can go to engine oil and I can change this date, All right? So today, as I mentioned before, is uh, December 7th, 2022, okay? And I'm gonna go take a look at my odometer here, cycle through it, and it'll give me my mileage, which is a uh, uh, 13,000, wait. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Uh, so 114,602. So I'm gonna go in and put uh, edit distance. So one, one, four, six, zero, two okay how cool is that and so now it'll tell it says remaining can i change remaining i don't know how that works it says distance oh maybe oh okay wait so we want to we don't want to put in the mileage that we have 
it wants us to put in the mileage that until we change it. I'm going to put in 6,000 miles. What do you think of that? Oh, now it says remaining again. I'm an idiot. It doesn't make sense. Distance and remaining. Distance? Remaining? Do I put OK? No, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put in the miles that was on the thing. Because this doesn't make any sense. I'm stupid. One, one, four, six, oh, two. I'll just refer back to this video if it doesn't work. Okay, I'll just put okay. All right, old filter. Well, you think it would do the same each time. I'm just gonna put in the date. I mean, all right, I'll put in the mileage. I don't know. It, it, uh, does any, is there a Toyota technician that can tell me if I'm just stupid or if I'm doing this wrong? All right. Rotation, tires, battery. Do I really need to know all those kind of things? Wipers, you know, I just changed the wipers. I'm going to go ahead. I just changed them like, I'm going to put in like 11, 25, 22. That's probably about the time I did it. The date is in the past. <laughs> ah, you pricks. It won't let me go back in time. I have to put in today. All right, I'll put in today. Whatever. Who cares? Close enough. <laughs> it won't let you backtrack. All right. Service? Well, what's service? What's a service as compared to what I just did? All right, the other thing to do is change... The uh, air filter, which is under all this plastic. Some of these little clips are not any good. I've got some generic ones I bought recently. Because um, sometimes those break. And it looks like it just resides right here. Wow. Well, that certainly couldn't have been any easier. Wasn't hard at all. not really that dirty but I'm gonna change it since I got a new one it says these are good for 12,000 miles but you know we live in Las Vegas it's out in the desert so I probably should change it a little bit more often and I want to be sure that I know exactly when it's been changed just notice it looks like there's another like pre-filter screen I'm sure this is fine this car is amazingly clean it really is. I mean, there's a little bit of dust in here, but like, um, and I'm going to add a little bit of brake fluid while I'm in, in here. You know, as your pads start to get thinner and wear out, you'll start to notice you've used a little bit of fluid. This is a dot four Lucas synthetic. I just need a little bit, just a little bit. Keep it happy. Picked this up at Harbor Freight not too long ago. It's a, just a generic box of little fir trees and palm rivets and stuff. Because with these plastic ass cars, these are handy to have around. You're always breaking these things. I would recommend that you figure out what size your car uses. If you've got one of these plastic cars. And then just order a whole bag of them because they're not that expensive you know like most of these i'm not going to use i have a lot of different cars so it's handy to have them around but you know there it goes it's nice and secure now and half the time like i said you break them uh every time you got to do a service but you see you get a bag you get a bag of them for a couple of bucks and um keeps it from being a problem in the future and uh so that's the air filter for the engine I also picked up the cabin air filter. I don't know if I feel like changing this or not. Sounds like a huge pain in the ass. We'll try to do it though. Come on. All right, what I understand is it's, is it actually in the glove box? There it is. It's not so bad. There we go. Ah. Yeah. Well, yeah.
Now I have heard about little tricks where you could spritz a little uh, smell good on here, air freshener and whatnot. I'm not gonna do that. It does uh, give you an indication, it says airflow up. That was tremendously easy. The dealer charges a lot of money for this. And I gotta be honest, I don't think it's worth it. So yeah, I mean, if you have any kind of mechanical ability at all, at least doing those filters is pretty easy. You saw how easy that filter was. And the engine oil uh, air filter was also very easy. And quite frankly, if all you have is a set of jack stands and a jack and you don't mind getting a little dirty, changing the oil on this thing is really easy too. But how much money do you really want to save? But uh, that's what this channel is all about. I told you in the previous video about this car that buying a 2011, an 11-year-old car it's gonna save you a ton of money. I bought this RX350 for only $10,000 cash. Now, I'm not gonna go spend four, five, six hundred bucks to do this service. Now, I had to spend some money on the old filter and I had to spend some money on the uh, oil itself. So maybe I spent 100, 200 bucks on all the different materials and things like that. But considering how much money I saved, had I had the correct tools with me, this whole job would have taken maybe 20 minutes. But thankfully for you, you've got me to make this video for you. And now you know to go get a 64 millimeter uh, cartridge removal tool. You know which of these filters to go get in order for your car because they're in the description down below. You were smart enough to watch the video all the way through. And now if you own one of these cars, all you need to do is go into the description on this video. Click on the links and order the oil, the filter, the chain, the, the wrench, these air filters, all the things you need from Amazon. You'll get them in a day or two, and you'll be able to do a full service on your RX350 because you watch this video and you're going to save a ton of money, and you're not going to have to run around and go to the store like I did, picking up the parts that were missing. So you were smart to watch the video all the way through and order on our affiliate Amazon link down below. So there you go. All right, we're all done with the car now, and now I get to enjoy it for another, I don't know, six, 10,000 miles. I like to change my miles. My, sometimes if I'm towing, I like to ch change it a lot sooner. I think they say the interval's like 6,000 to 10,000 miles. I like to change it more often, but now you know how to do it. So thanks for watching. We've covered everything on the car, I think. I'm Video Bob, stay tuned, more to come. Just one more.